Hello, in this video, we will briefly go through the powerful shader system in Blender. So in other words, I'm going to introduce you to the node system. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and pull up a new window. So I'm just going to click, left click and drag and just change that uh, and just create a new window here. I'm then going to change this to the rendered mode and then change the editor in this window to the node editor. So as you can see here, from our previous video, we've mixed the glossy and the emission shader. So these little boxes that you see here, they are called nodes. I want to start completely from the beginning. So I'm just going to box select that, X delete, and we have no shaders at the moment. You need a material output shader. The surface pin represents the final shader of your object. The volume represents if there's any volume metrics going on. Displacement uh, shows any bumps and things like that on your 3D model. So to add a shader, all I have to do is press Shift A, Shader, and let's just say uh, Diffuse Shader. Having added that Diffuse Shader, it has done nothing to our 3D object. To actually see the Diffuse Shader, I have to left click drag the output of the BSDF and drop it on the surface input of the material output window. So now we can see our diffuse shader. Here I can also change the color, just like we did in the properties window there. So it's doing exactly the same thing. I can also add, say, a glossy shader, but I can't see anything here. If I left click drag and drop that in the material output, I can see my glossy shader coming through. I can change the roughness here to zero and see 100% reflection. I can also mix these shaders. So to do so, Shift A, Shader, Mix Shader, and then just move your mouse around here. And when you see this little, when you hover over this uh, line, it starts to turn orange. So just drop it there. And that will automatically snap the output of the glossy shader into the input of the shader node and the output of this mix shader node to the input of the surface node of the material output. So I can then grab the output of the diffuse shader node and stick it in any one of these pins. Uh, it does exactly the same thing. It will mix both the diffuse shader and the glossy shader into the output. So here I can change the factor. So if I go zero, it tends to favor the top shader more, the diffuse shader. So in this case, uh, I'm putting 0% of the glossy shader and 100% of the diffuse shader. If I put it at one, this is now 100% the glossy shader and 0% the diffuse shader. So you only see just the glossy part. If I put 0.5, we now have an equal distribution of diffuse and glossy. So we have made some type of car paint, I think. So that's pretty cool. We can obviously do a bit more than that. So I'm just going to left click drag this out of the way a little bit. Then I'm going to shift A, shader, and add in another mix shader. And let's just drop it in there so that um, it will plug in automatically. Shift A, shader, and let's add in a mission shader. And left click drag from the output of the mission shader to the input of the shader node in the mix shader tab. And there we have three shaders that are taking effect. I want to turn down the strength of this emission shader a little bit and maybe change the color of this to something different, like weird, let's say green. This now definitely looks like some type of alien object. Anyways, uh, let's make the strength of that a little bit higher actually. Oh, that's too strong. 0.6. So, we'll point 0.4. So it looks like we've now created some kind of alien shader. So this is our node system that is used to control what our final shader will look like. So if you've seen one of those realistic looking uh, 3D animation movies like, um, I think, Pixar's Up or some other animated movies, you'll notice some of the characters' skin looks so awesomely realistic. That's because they have many different shaders working together to simulate a very realistic look. For example, the human skin is not as simple as this shader system here. The human skin is very, very detailed. This is the skin shader setup that I used for my character in my short film, Uir. So you can see how complex and detailed it can be. It's not only just simply putting in uh, shaders and mixed shaders and things like that. You can do more, you can add in uh, camera data, so you can do quite advanced stuff. I can add in, say, an image texture, and I can input my image wherever it is, and then connect that image to the color, and that will then use the image that you put in here 
to display at the diffuse shader on your 3D object. So I can see a bit of purple, which is the default uh, color if there is no image being loaded. So we can see that it's sort of working. So I hope this video has been useful to you and that you realize the power of the node system in Blender. Um, we will be using the node system in our exercise in the end of this section. So look out for that. So I hope this video has been helpful and keep blending.